Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about quantum processors and quantum computing use cases. Hello, everybody. I am Narash Jasutani, and I am a specialist customer engineer working at Google in AI and ML space. I'm going to be a presenter for this course. I have published Adapting TensorFlow for Real World AI, which is available on Google Play Store as well as Amazon Kindle. In the early 1900s, early to mid 1900s, when the first digital computers were created, it opened up a world of new possibilities. Just as the first digital computers were far more powerful than the current systems, quantum computers are expected to be exponentially faster and more powerful than a classical computers. Why? The quantum computing depends on quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics is the driver behind quantum computing and quantum mechanics is the physics at the atomic and the subatomic level. Where matter, energy and momentum. All three are quantized. Well, you must be wondering why I'm deep diving into physics. I'm not. Like classical computers that are based on sequential information processing. Quantum computing makes use of three fundamental properties of quantum physics. Superposition, inferences, and entanglement. And all three I'm not going to discuss about those in this video. We have a next video, which is what is quantum computing, which describes all these together. Well, Google has claimed to achieve quantum computing with Sycamore processors. And the picture which you are seeing on the right hand side is Sycamore processor with 54 bit qubits. What are qubits? When in classical computing, you have a bit which denotes a value one or zero. In quantum computing, the equivalent of bit is qubits and it's exponentially more powerful. In 2019, Sycamore, which is Google's quantum processor, completed a task in 200 seconds, which is just over three minutes, which would take a supercomputer in the classical bit processing 10,000 years to finish. Can you imagine? 10,000 years to finish. You also have bristle cone computing with Google's 72 bit qubits quantum processor. Although the field is advancing rapidly, we still haven't reached to what is known as quantum computing, which is at the point where quantum computings can solve problems that classical supercomputers practically cannot solve. We'll talk about the use cases in a bit. Now, how are these quantum computers created? And before that, let's talk about how much information 54 qubits can store. As discussed earlier, quantum bits or qubits provide exponentially more computing power. For calculation purposes, the number of bits required to store 54 qubits data. Hypothetically, let's assume that you have classical computer computing bits. You want to store 54 qubits of information. You would need 2 raised to power 54. Imagine exponential growth of data processing. 2 raised to 54 qubits. So the number of classical bits required for storing qubits information is 2 raised to the number of qubits. 2 raised to 54 in case of Sycamore processor and 2 raised to 72 in terms of in case of Bristle Cone processor, which I guess is still work in progress for Google. Now how these processors are made, are created. You can read it, it's not important. The first step towards building clean qubits is to build the qubit circuits out of superconducting materials. That means there is no electrical loss. Superconductors, please understand, perform at a very, very low temperatures. So Sycamore operates its qubits in a cristostat, which is less than 50 millikelvin, almost freezing, absolute zero. The cold temperatures and vacuum inside the chirostat also contribute 
to keeping the qubit environment clean. Clean meaning no loss of data. The warmest stage, the warmest stage is on the top, and the colder stage, it colder it gets as you go down to the processor. And the processor is in here. So that is a complex processor. Would you need access to this? Yes, probably because if you want to learn how quantum computer works, but would you be able to buy it? Probably not at this stage. Of course, you won't need quantum computers like classical PCs and laptops, but here are some use cases for of quantum computing. So the fundamental idea of quantum computing is to break through the barriers that limit the speed of existing computers by harnessing the physics of subatomic quantum particles. Developing novel medical treatments by simulating complex biological systems. Other use cases of quantum computing include cryptography, medicines, machine learning, and searching big data. Quantum computing, the first few models are created to develop molecular composition for analysis of nitrogen molecules which forms the fertilizers. It's quite expensive to, to form a new composition of a fertilizer molecule. In healthcare domain, healthcare quantum computers will make it possible to simulate molecular structure and dramatically speeding the process of drug discovery. So in case of COVID-19, I'm pretty sure that scientists are using quantum computers to come up with the right formula for COVID-19 um, drugs. You have smart cities and global warming, which can be a use case for quantum computing processors. In case of smart cities, Google is working very intensively to help traffic optimization and material simulations of high performance batteries for electric vehicles in order to make a smart city, carbon, low carbon emission cities. Global warming is also a very good use case on quantum computing radar where environmental benefits of carbon capture using low power consumption. Now, do you think in future the quantum computing is going to be replacing the classical computers? Probably not. Think of it. Somebody told me this. Quantum computers are like pictures. So pictures, when you look at pictures, it's, in, it's interesting because you will get a lot of information. And classical computers are like captions to picture. So quantum computing, think of a picture and classical computing as a caption. Both can coexist together. There are some cases where quantum computing do not fit at all at today's level. And this era of quantum computing is known as NISC era, N-I-S-Q. For details of all this, I'm providing you a link here for what is quantum computing in detail. Thank you for watching.